Let us discuss the important terms that we use while we discuss all the things or principles of genetics. First is gene. Gene is the functional unit of inheritance. Functional unit. Now, this term gene was given by Johansson. Johan Sun and gene was originally called factor. Gene was called factor by Mendel. So when Mendel was talking about this so-called thing which gets inherited, he did not use the term gene. He called it a factor. Later on, Johansson named it as gene. Second important term, alleles. Alleles are two forms of a gene or we can say just forms of gene. Forms of a gene. Now normally we talk of two forms because one is the dominant one, the other is the recessive one and there is a simple rule which we normally follow the dominant is represented by the capital alphabet and say for example if we are talking about tall which is a dominant trait we would use capital T to represent the dominant form of this gene and if we are talking about the recessive form of the same uh, character that is height we know it is dwarf or short we will not use D or S, we would use the same alphabet in its lowercase form or small alphabet. So, capital for representing dominant and lowercase for representing the recessive. So, these are normally the two forms and if we have to write these, we can write it as capital T and small t. Capital T represents the dominant and lowercase t represents the recessive. So there are two normal forms of G. But sometimes we talk of multiple alleles. When we take the example of blood group, we'll talk about more than two. But normally there are two forms. If these two genes are of same type, that means both are dominant or both are recessive, the condition is known as homozygous. That means both dominant or recessive. But here we have to specify. Homozygous can be dominant also or recessive. Now when we are talking of homozygous dominant and let us take the same example. We will write it as two capital T's. This will be homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive will be when we write two lowercase t's. If one is dominant and other is recessive, the term that we, that we use is known as heterozygous. And when we talk of heterozygous, we don't have to write dominant or recessive. Reason is heterozygous means one of one allele of one type that is dominant and other allele is of other type that is recessive. When we know there is one dominant and one recessive, invariably the plant is going to be tall. So we simply can leave it at homozygous or if we want to be very specific, we can write homozygous dominant. But this is not essential. Another important term is phenotype and genotype. Phenotype and genotype. Phenotype is physical appearance and genotype is genetic makeup. What is the genetic makeup like? 
Now phenotype means how it looks. Suppose we write a capital T and a small t. This means we are talking of a heterozygous condition. What would be the height of the plant? Will it be a tall plant or a short plant? There is this tall gene, so the plant is going to be tall. Another situation is homozygous dominant. The plant is again going to be tall. So, from external appearance, we are talking of how it looks. In both the cases, the plant is tall. But genetically, it is tall because of different reasons. So, when we are talking of only how it looks, tall or short, we are talking of phenotype. And this is tall because it is heterozygous. So, we will write it as heterozygous tall. So, when we talk of heterozygous tall, we are talking of its genetic makeup. Heterozygous means one dominant, one recessive. And when we talk of this particular plant, we will call it homozygous tall. And when we use the term homozygous tall, we mean that both the genes which are present, they are the dominant genes. So, only appearance is phenotype and the genetic makeup is the genotype. Next term, a cross. Cross is actually breeding the two plants or uh, reproducing the two plants. So when we say a tall plant is crossed with a short plant, that means we are talking about breeding a tall plant with a short plant or reproduction between a tall plant and a short plant. This is a cross. Next, filial. Filial means we are talking of the next generation. We represent it as F1, F2 and so on. So when we cross, say a tall plant with a short plant, the next generation will produce offsprings of a particular type. So we say in F1, that is in filial 1 or in generation 1, this is what is going to be their genotype and phenotype. So here we are talking about the next generation and the numbers tell us which generation we are talking of, the first generation or the second generation and so on. The next important thing or term that we talk of is punit square. Punit square is named after the scientist who actually gave this representation. It is a simple checkerboard kind of a thing. Named after the scientist. Punit square. Punit square. Now, the way we make punit square is if we are talking about a particular plant, say we are crossing a tall plant with a short plant, then we will write down the gametes produced by one plant on one side. This parent or this plant will produce gametes having T's. So we will write T and T here. And the gametes produced by the other plant on the other side. So here, this will produce the gametes containing small t's. So the gametes produced by other plant on the other side. And this, these boxes show us the probable combination. Suppose this is the plant from where we are taking the male gamete and this side we have written down the gamete coming from the female plant. So if this t, small t containing egg is fertilized, by capital T containing male gamete, then the individual or offspring will have capital T from male gamete and lowercase t from the female gamete. In this case, the situation is going to be same. So, these four are the offsprings or we can say these four belong to the first generation or filial one. So, this representation which gives us the probability of 
the genotype or phenotype of the next generation is checked or calculated or identified using this punit square. We will use this punit square uh, many a times. I think this is number seven. Then eighth term, another important term is selfing. Selfing means if we cross the members of the same generation. Here we said this, this represents the parent generation, the gametes, and these four are from the first generation or F1. If we say if the, when two plants of F1 are selfed, that means we have taken two plants of the same generation and we are crossing them. So selfing is crossing the organisms of the same generation then that term is selfing. Another important term is pure line. Pure line is normally used when we have a particular genotype being selfed for more than five consecutive generations. That means first generation capital T capital T that is homozygous dominant crossed with homozygous dominant. In first generation or in F1 all the plants will be same that is in F1 they are going to be all capital T capital T. So we will go on doing this for at least five generations. The purpose is to get the plants which show only one type of genotype. That means if you are talking of homozygous dominant, all offspring should be homozygous dominant. So this will give us a pure line. Another term is, again related to the cross, is monohybrid cross. Monohybrid cross. Monohybrid cross is when we are crossing the plants and checking only one character. So, if we take tall plant cross with short plant, we have discussed only one character. So, this cross will be termed as a monohybrid cross. If we talk of dihybrid cross, then we are talking of two characters. Say, if I write homozygous tall and homozygous purple plant is crossed with a short and wide plant. How many characters of one plant are we taken, taking into account at a time? We are talking of height and color, two characters at the same time. Next, trihybrid cross. Trihybrid cross would be Three characters being taken into account. Tall plant with purple flower and axial position of the flower. Crossed with short plant with white flower and terminal position of plant. So how many characters have we taken? We have taken height, we have taken color of the flower and we have taken position of the flower into account. So monohybrid cross, only one trait or character taken into account, dihybrid to trihybrid, three characters. We will be discussing up to trihybrid crosses. There are a couple of more important terms which we would be using during this uh, complete chapter, but we will take up those terms as and when we come across those things. So these are some important terms which we have to remember while discussing various uh, inheritance or loss of genetics.